G'day, on this episode of Out There Living, we are installing the iTech World 30 Amp MPPT Solar Controller. So we're going to have a look at the iTech World MPPT 30 amp solar controller. Uh, we'll tell you why we're going to put it in and we'll show you how easy it is to install. So we do have the um, solar input in the 40 amp DC DC charger there, but the DC charger will choose between the car alternator or um, this, the solar panel. If the car's running, it won't use solar. Um, so we wanted to utilize the solar panels when the car was running. So we can use a separate solar controller. We'll be able to utilize the panels on the roof and then the input from the, um, the solar input from the DC-DC charger is just there if we want to run a portable panel. So we're taking a look at the iTech World 30 amp MPPT solar controller. 30 amp meaning it at its best, this is going to put out 30 amps into our battery system. Uh, MPPT meaning maximum power point tracking. Basically it means this is a little computer um, it analyzes all the power coming in from the solar, uh, it, it analyzes your battery type that you preset and then it decides on a charge profile for your battery system. Now it is good for 12 or 24 volt uh, battery systems uh, with a maximum battery voltage up to 32 volts. Now the iTech World 30 amp solar controller will take uh, a solar panel with an open circuit voltage up to 100 volts. So to give you a bit of um, understanding, most of your fixed solar panels that you um, will get for your car or your caravan, they're around 24 volts and um, your house panels are around the 45 uh, volts open circuit. One thing you do want to make sure is that you don't have a solar panel with its own little regulator on the back of it because it'll regulate the power down and it just won't be enough for this solar controller to recognize that it's plugged in. So this solar controller is good for charging lead acid, lithium and gel batteries. It's got all the charge profiles built into it. You simply choose your charge profile and then away it goes and it, it does all the analytics itself. Another uh, benefit of this solar controller is it's got a customizable um, charge profile, so you can make you can customize your own charge profile. I won't be talking about that because I know nothing about it; it's well above my head. But if you are right into your um, your solar and all that sort of stuff, and you want to do a custom charge profile, this is good for it. Now, having a look at the unit, you can see it's got its LCD screen here, some control buttons, some USB outlets all your terminals down here for uh, battery and solar panel and then here you've got a, um, uh, some load terminals so you can run um, this in load mode and it's got an inbuilt 10 amp fuse. Uh, over here you've got a temperature sensor which has an inbuilt temperature um, protection as well as reverse polarity protection and a load of other protective features uh, built into it. And then you look around the back here it's got some um, heat dissipating fins on it, so you can mount it flat against something and air's still going to run through there. It's going to breathe and protect itself. So we'll install this and then we'll have a look at the user interface and how that operates. Now, we're going to mount the unit up here and you can see we've already ran the cables um, and the solar panel coming in. Now we've done all that in the battery install video. I won't go into too much detail on the 12 volt wiring side of things because there's just too many variants and it is really um, specific to, to your setup and your needs. So that's something that you have to go and research yourself, talk to some experts and, and I'm certainly no auto lex so I'm probably not going to give you any solid advice on that. Now mounting's quite easy, there's four holes, two down either side. You can screw it, bolt it, whatever you want to do. We've got the ply on the wall, so we can happily screw this. Uh, what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit, bit and run the cables through uh, one of the fins down the back there. So we line it up 
with the um, battery terminals. There you can see, run the cables through the back of the fins. Now I've got my marker. I've already pre-fitted all this just to make the video look a bit smoother. There we go, two screws in it for now. Um, I'll put a couple more in later, these ones are pretty short. So, in the centre is your battery terminals. Um, positive on the left, negative on the right. So, I'll go through and hook all that up. Now, to connect the um, solar panel, We've just ran a couple um, spade lugs to a Anderson plug. Because we've got the solar panel coming in here that we are going to replace very shortly. So um, I don't want to hardwire it just yet. So that is going to look a little bit messy, but um, we'll tidy that up in another video. Now what I have done here to these power supply is I've twitched the wire up and then I've um, put a bit of solder in there just to make it solid and that can go straight into uh, the terminal of the solar controller. Now you can see there, as soon as it's got a positive and a negative feed from your uh, battery bank, the display will light up and you can go through and pick all your settings and stuff like that. So we've just finished connecting it up. Um, as you can see here, I've put a fuse in um, to protect that wire going to the battery. Um, underneath, everything's ran under there to the terminals, um, everything except the load side. Then you shut that, have a look up here. You can see it's got some um, two buttons and a USB point. So um, the first screen you'll see, it, it's showing you the battery voltage. And then if you scroll through, you go up there and it's showing you the charge current. So there we've got no charge coming from the sun to the um, controller but in the battery we've got 190 amps. Then if you click and hold the plus button for three seconds, it'll change from um, amps to percentage down here. And then you click and hold, it'll go back to overall amps. If you push and hold plus button, it takes you into your secondary screens. You've got your lithium battery constant voltage charge point, voltage of equalization charge, voltage of absorption charge then you've got your float voltage charge then you've got your under voltage protection which you can adjust then you've got your under voltage recovery point which you can adjust then you've got your battery type so then when you get to this this is the first thing you will want to adjust so push and hold and then that starts flashing and then you can flick through up or down till you find the battery type you want. Now you want LIF for LIFPO4 which is what we're running or LIP is a different lithium so just go to LIF and then you push and hold that until it stops flashing and there we go. Um, oh there we go and now it's gone to cap now we can set our amperage so capacity so push and save that um, and then you can go through to your next screen. So your system voltage, if you wanted to use a 24 volt, you push and hold the plus button. Uh, you go to automatic 12 or 24. So um, we're gonna go to 12. Yes, I am wearing a different jumper. That's because it's a lot later than when we were just playing with the settings here before. What happened when we changed the system settings from uh, auto to 12 volt? We got an E17 error code come up and I've talked to the techs at iTech World, they're really good. They got back to me with an email and a phone call like within hours. Uh, what that means is you just got to take your battery and your solar uh, cables out, let any residual power disappear, maybe wait two or three minutes and then plug it all back in. Now this is because it's changing the system settings, the voltage settings. The, um, the solar controller needs to reset and that's the, it'll just do that every time. It'll put up that code every time, so then you have to reset it. All right, hooroo, back to the settings. So we've got the system set back to automatic. 
That's a temperature control ratio. I don't know much about that. I'm just gonna leave that. The nod is your load mode. So you can go into the different load modes. So we'll push that and hold. We've got LN1, which is regular mode. LN2, which is light control mode. LN3, which is dual mode and L4 which is charge only mode. So if you went into um, setting number two or three, LN two or three, you can actually um, set the time on, switch on and off for night lights coming out of the load terminals down the bottom there. Uh, but we're just gonna leave that. And then that screen there is the remote communication number which um, looks like you can get some sort of remote screen. I don't know a lot about it. All right, so we'll go back and just check everything. Um, the LUR is the under voltage recovery point, which I rang the iTech World Techs and they said go to 11.5. So we'll save that. And then the LUD, they said to go to 11.5, which is the low voltage uh, under protection point. So we'll go to 11.5 there and then click and save again. One, two, three until it stops flashing. There we go. Uh, now everything else seems to be fine. Like I don't know about these other settings. We won't play around with them. We'll just leave them. And then if you wait 15 seconds, that'll flash back to the normal screen. So there you have it. A 30 amp MPPT iTech World Solar Controller installed and settings adjusted to suit our 100S slimline lithium batteries. If you want to get your hands on a solar controller or any other 12 volt gear, head across to itechworld.com.au and when you're at the checkout, use the discount code OUTTHERELIVING to save 10% store wide. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you can keep up to date with all our latest videos and tech reviews. Head across to Facebook and Instagram, follow us there, follow us on TikTok, leave us uh, comments and feedback, we love responding. And just remember, whatever it takes, get out there living. Hooroo!